All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Oh Hell No. Uh, we're on episode three, which we're going to talk about uh, season three of the amazing show Girlfriends. It, the guys, like a lot, let, let's just break this down for a second, right? So, season one of Girlfriends was the first date for us, right? We're getting to know the girls and William, like, you know, we're trying to see if we want to like the show or not. There's some funny parts here and there. Uh, you know, season two was like the second date. Like we're starting to get to know them a little bit more. You know, we're still feeling them out. We're not sure if we're, like, we're all in on the show yet or not. Season three is like the full-blown relationship. Now we're actually trying to like get into the intricacies of like each character. We're trying to, we're really starting to know like, what drives each character and what why they do what they do throughout the entire show. So I think season three, out of all eight seasons, might be the best one. It's just the most pivotal one. It foreshadows to all the other seasons. Uh, so like, for example, let's talk about Lynn, for example, right? We learn in season three that Lynn never really know, learned what her passion was. And that's why Lynn's just been kind of like aimlessly bouncing around from like, weird job or weird thing from weird thing that's why she's always been in school that's why she's never really done her own thing she has a fear of the cubicles at work we learned about joan we learned that joan is really the most selfish girlfriend more so than tony uh, and that you know even if you're at your lowest point joan's just looking out for herself and herself only we learn about maya for example, Maya is the youngest girlfriend. She's 25 years old. So like looking back on the episode now or looking back on the, the, the entire season, you know, Maya, like what Maya has done and mistakes she's done, you know, you kind of have to sit back and realize she's 25 years old in the show. She's, she's young. So, you know, we learned that about her. And then we learned that Tony, you know, she's very superficial, but more importantly, she doesn't really know how to be in a relationship. And then for William, we learned that William is the goat. He's going to go. He's the goat. Shout out to Reggie Hayes. Um, but we learned that William is going to go all in on his career, like just completely all in on his career. Um, so let me just do like a very brief, like high level, of like what happened this season, right? So like uh, this season starts off with uh, us discovering that Maya is still outside of her home. Uh, Darnell kicked her out, so she's staying with Joan. Um, and her breakup or her separation with Darnell is really impacting her kid. Uh, her kid is just hearing the rumors. Her kid is her kid. Her kid's grandma is pretty much telling him the relationship's done. Mom is cheating. <laughs> All stuff you shouldn't be telling a kid. Uh, and this kid is like really impacting Maya. Why not? It should her. know. A kid should know from the parents, not from Big Mama. True. Uh, Big Mama just didn't like Maya, which is odd because like the kids are like eight, nine years old, so that means they've been together for that long. You should have kind of kind of get over your hatred of her by now. Um, so that's kind of wearing on Maya. Uh, we learned that Joan, for example, she she's difficult to live with. Maya tells her that. Like Maya tells her straight up, you're very difficult to live with. And the reason why is because Joan's just always looking for like things to nitpick. She's always trying to push people out. Uh, when Maya thought that she was getting back with her husband, Darnell, Darnell just kind of tells her, like, look, I was lonely and horny, and I just wanted to hook up. And you know what? We kind of grew apart. We're not teenagers anymore. We should just move on. Sets Maya into pretty much a depression. <laughs> After that, Joan's like, oh, get this girl out of here. <laughs> it's just not really the friend to, like, lean on at your, uh, hey, at your Joan's point. That, it's, just, it's just a show. Like, that's how Joan is throughout the show. Uh, we learned more about Joan's boyfriend, Ellis, um, and this, you know, speaking upon like how Joan uh, kind of always thinks off for herself, Ellis is an actor, right? They met at the gym, and as they're going, as they're dating, as they're kind of going steady, uh, we learned that, you know, Ellis, for example, is a growing actor. He can't have Joan with him 24-7 because he has to have the persona that he's an eligible bachelor. Joan isn't really like that. So that show kind of foreshadows a little bit, um, you know, does Joan really like Ellis for who he is or does Joan really want the Hollywood lifestyle? And that's like a big foreshadow to like seasons, I think six, seven, and eight. Uh, and then also Ellis, 
kind of like Maya, he hits a low point in his life and his career. Uh, he realizes that he gets rejected by the black community for the roles that he plays. He says that he wants to be known as an actor, not a black actor. And that pisses off a lot of people. And as you should. He, right. And, you know, as he's moping around the house or Joan's house, Joan is like, ah, oh, I just want to go out for a date. What's wrong with you? And it takes Maya to kind of, you know, hit her and stole into her head. Like, look, he's going through something right now. You need to be there for him. Um, we learned a little bit more about William. Uh, William has a nephew son. Uh, he's impregnating his lesbian girlfriend's, his lesbian's girlfriend, basically. So his lesbian girlfriend wants to have a kid. The kid wants to be related to the family. So William donates his sperm. That's a kind of like a funny, reoccurring thing throughout the series. Um, we learned that William meets Monica. Monica is going to be a huge part. And the show kind of foreshadows like Monica's role in the future a little bit, probably unintentionally. So we learned that Monica is a gold digger. We learned that Monica kind of like only liked William for his potential in his career. And we learned that Monica doesn't really do anything. Her parents are rich. She doesn't really want to work. She just wants to go from like a comfortable lifestyle to another comfortable lifestyle. And she is going to coach William up to do that. Uh, the girlfriends see through that. They don't like, they don't like her at all except for one girlfriend. And that one girlfriend that actually kind of like fucks with uh, Monica is Tony, which is actually a huge foreshadow to season seven and eight. Huge. And it, I just got there. Yeah. Oh, gosh, I'm done. Really big foreshadow, basically. Because uh, as you can see, like, you know, when Monica's being kind of a bitch to other girlfriends, Tony is just there like, good job, queen, good job, girl. Just like cheering her on and realizing that she's not on her side. It's kind of hilarious, but it's a huge foreshadow to season seven and eight. Um, we talked about Darnell. Oh, we learned that Ellis has another kid, or Ellis has a kid. Um, I was like, another kid. <laughs> sorry, he has a kid. I apologize. So <laughs> apparently his ex-girlfriend was very trifling. She told Ellis on Valentine's Day that she was pregnant, like very pregnant. Um, Ellis kind of like had his whole Valentine's Day th- um, theme of Valentine's Day scavenger hunt for Joan. Joan's super excited because, you know, Joan's like, oh, this is all about me. None of my girlfriends are doing this. And it kind of ends where Joan figures out that Ellis is going to be a father and Ellis is just like freaking out. He didn't plan for this. And Joan kind of pushes him away a little bit. She's like, well, what does this leave me? What is this? I'm worried about myself. And Ellis is like, dude, like, I am going to be a dad. I didn't plan this at all. So that kind of like pushes him away a little bit. Uh, we had the infamous uh, man versus woman argument episode. I saw Delight has that in his talking points. So we'll get to that later. Uh, we had the Christmas episode where we discovered that William's all in on his career. Uh, so basically, William promises Javari or Javari to be his uh, to play Black Santa, and William kind of just like, you know, says tells him way in advance he can't do it. He's too busy spending twenty thousand dollars. To secure a promotion at his company. Uh, we're introduced to Omar, and the show kind of foreshadows why Lynn is initially attracted to, um, I'm sorry, not Omar, to Survive, where like, we just learned like, why Lynn is attracted to Survive. And is it because of his poetry, or is it just because of him in general, right? So is she in love with, like, you know, the music, the art, you know, the creativity? Oh, no, I didn't hear what you said about him like i am like i'm done watching it now obviously like damn there's been so many niggas on this show there was a lot there was a lot of dudes on the show um but you know, isn't that how women live, live though is that not how niggas live though not like that deep like it don't be lasting that long like, they'd be really into it with them facts tomato tomato you know all right we go to like my favorite episode, which is episode 13. I call it the corporate America episode. And this episode is basically where uh, both William and Joan realize that there's a glass ceiling at their company. And that glass ceiling is like, they're not old white men. And they both have aspirations to get promoted. And this episode kind of shows it in two different types of employees, right? We have William, who's the go-getter, who thinks like he should get promoted. He's willing to do everything. He spent $20,000 to get promoted. Um, and then you have Joan, 
who does her work really, really well, but she doesn't really go above and beyond. And they both think they want to get promoted. They both like, are expecting to get promoted because the firm's starting to diversify senior ranks. And at the end of the episode, they get passed over for the, uh, the promotion. And so William uh, pretty much decides then and there, you guys don't respect me, I'm leaving. And he thought that Joan was going to back him up and Joan's like, I'm happy exactly where I'm at and the position that I'm at. And it really shows you how the two different approaches that they took, how like that impacted them later in their careers there. It's very interesting, it was a really good episode. I really kind of want to get into that. Um, and then like we go into the later parts of the season, uh, Tony kind of peer pressures Todd, forgot about Todd. Uh, Tony kind of peer pressures Todd, so Todd is her doctor, he's short, and Tony really pushes Todd away from the get-go. Todd is such a nice, in this season, he's a nice guy, um, he gives her everything that she wants, but she always pushes him away for something. He's too short, he didn't give me enough gifts, it's always something, and that kind of foreshadows into like season four and season five a little bit. Um, and but Tony, surprisingly, she tells Todd, like, look, if you don't marry me, it's over. And Todd does what he does. He goes, buys her a very expensive ring. Uh, he gives her this super expensive wedding that she wants. And because she's getting married, this kind of annoys Joan. Because Joan wants to get married before Tony did. <laughs> and Joan is pissed off, and Joan takes her anger out on Ellis, pushing him even further away. And she takes her anger out on Tony as well. It creates a lot of very awkward and cringy scenes throughout this, uh, this uh, season. But eventually they work out their, their differences. Uh, Ellis takes back uh, Joan again. And they have like, a very, very happy close to the season with the girls dancing down the aisle with Tony getting married to Todd. And that's, that's season three in a quick recap. Yo, I wish Todd was black. No, I I like white Todd. And you know why I wish Todd was black? Because I feel like I would have been able to relate to Todd so much. How so? Just because he's short. <laughs> and like I like just everything, like like I feel like when you uh date certain type of women, especially ones like Tony, where, where it's just like, you know, they know they're like that. It's like I feel like when you're short, like women always like um what's the word is it like demasculate you like they'll be like yes i know what you mean they kind of like take away from your manhood a bit they're like That's well you know like they, when they get mad they'll bring up that when you're short i mean i don't ever care about it right that's just me personally but i can see how that that like you know definitely get hit on um certain people even if you that's go on social ghetto, even if like, even if you go on social media like you just see the the attacks from black twitter on short men it's just like Y'all don't y'all don't even fuck with short men, so it's like, why do y'all hate short niggas so much? It's just like okay, but- Tony used t- Tony will always bring that up. Like you should honestly hate tall niggas more than short niggas if you're not fucking with short niggas. We didn't do that to y'all. All heights but I feel matter. Like that's like okay, the 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 Tony like commenting on Todd's height like continuously like she 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 never failed to do it like even throughout like leading up like. To the rest of the, pro- the progression of their like relationship, but I low key think that's corny, especially like okay. To me, it's like the short nigga jokes are okay as long as you're not fucking with a short nigga. If you let a short nigga hit, you're like married to a short nigga. You got a baby by a short nigga. Like you gotta be quiet and just hang it up because it's like you fucking with a short nigga. Like okay, maybe it's different when like everybody's kicking on black Twitter, like, uh, short niggas this, short niggas that, but like, you are seriously dealing with a short nigga, like, why are you doing this to him? I also just think at a certain point, too, like, I don't know, I guess because I'm short myself, I'm like barely 5'3", so I mean, everybody's like tall compared to me, but, um, like, the height shit doesn't bother me that much, and honestly, I feel like there's a lot of other short women too who be like, who oh, want to tell me you're like, you gotta be six feet. And it's just like, Miss Mamas, you're five three. Like a five eight guy will do just fine. Like, what's the mm-hmm. but I like, don't know. but that's like I, the whole point. That's funny. literally the whole I point. I, I engage in the short jokes. I really do. 
but um at a certain point like if you're not tall like I have some girlfriends that are like you know like five ten five but you know what I'm saying so it's like okay I understand like you want you know you want a little tree you can climb but like you fucking this nigga and y'all marry like sister hang the jokes up but it's not jokes like I know in her head she's like damn I really I really like this short nigga and I've seen I'll tell you like when you're short like you feel it like you're like dad she's like I wish I could have you in, a, in like a, like another nigga I used to deal but you know that's just, like, it's just a part of life I ain't never said no shit like that to a nigga like I feel like at a certain point like that's just rude like <clears throat> that's like if a nigga said to me like damn I, I wish I could have you but just like you know with bigger titties and a fatter ass you know what I'm saying like it just, at a certain point it's just rude like that nigga can't help that he five four mm-hmm well, that's kind of like, um, you know, it's a good segue into the men the versus women. I don't condone that. Uh, so they been, they had an episode <laughs> in this season where, um, you know, the guys were over at the house, at Joan's house, and they were just kicking off them. And they were just saying, like, how all the guys, what they had to go through, all the jokes, all the stuff that they had to deal with from women, and the women kind of bring it, brought it back on them, like, well, guys are kind of superficial too. Like, you know, we, like, you know, what Hannah said, if my titties aren't big enough, my ass not fat enough, whatever. You know what I mean? So it is, it is kind of funny how like, you know, there is like a both sides to this type of thing. Yeah, that's what I say too. Like, okay, like the, the short thing, um, like amongst women and like doing guys is like definitely a thing, but I feel like men are way more superficial. Than, I disagree. Like, I just, oh, 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 I disagree. Yeah, I disagree. I think it's, I think it's like five percent of niggas. I, yeah, oh, I disagree. Man, <laughs> you can see a niggas' baby moms. <laughs> like, what? Well, okay, but your stupidity and your like poor decision making, like your your lack of like better judgment, isn't like okay. Niggas having ugly baby mothers is not the same as like what niggas like preferences are. Like niggas are very, very, very superficial. Like let's not lie. Like how many? I feel like there are more like attractive women with like quote unquote like medium ugly niggas than it is with like. Uh. Then it's like men. <laughs> like I can't. Men are definitely way more superficial than women. I think like, a I, certain type of man, yes, but I'm to the the average Joe man. There's no way there no, might be. There might, there might be. I'm not talking about who a man decides to fuck, but like, I'm, like I think there's a distinction between like who a man decides to fuck and versus like who he decides to be like in a committed relationship with. I hundred. That man will fuck almost anything as long as you got a pulse and you got a pussy. Like I, a, a I, man I, will fuck you. So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about I committed relationships. With you. I hundred percent agree with you. Committed relationships. I hundred percent agree with you. Like, there's a difference. The reason why I say there's a difference is because even when, like, we can just use athletes for example. Like, even we always say this this thing about how athletes are superficial. They date only date certain type of women. But a lot foreshadowing, sir. Um, a lot of these dudes end up, you know, they'll end up. I'm not saying their wife is regular, but it'd be their day one. Like they'd be marrying their day one piece. They might fuck the girl. That's you know how niggas fuck anything, but they're still ending up with with the regular, the the everyday girl. But uh, I don't. Think I think I think a lot of women, let, me finish, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. A lot of women, like it, this, is just something that even men are even raised as like to think like old head. Like oh, I remember being like 18. They're like yo, just focus on focus on your books. Do this. Do that. Because women will like. The niggas just know in their head like if you wait long enough you'll be able to have access to a certain type of woman as you you gain money you gain certain type of things where it's just like oh she, she might have not liked you when she was 24 but she'll like you when she's you know 28 or 30 like there's definitely women who um I, I tried to talk to when I was 22 that I, I ended up messing with when I was like 27 just because like you got your it, shit together like no it's not even that it's not it's literally not even that it's be, it's literally they settle that's all it is and I feel like that's what Tony did with Todd. She ended up settling, even though she ended up liking him, of course, but that isn't who she ended up being with. I think men end up being with uh, women who are regular because that's who they actually wanted to be with. Like there's so many rap songs about, I want to be with a regular girl, even though in their music videos, they'd be having all these women who look a certain type of way. So but I, I feel like we're not giving Todd his credit though. It, it wasn't because like he was white because I think in season one or two, Tony dates a white dude. Um, it wasn't his money. He's a doctor, so he has money. It was literally just his height. And like Tony, like let us know this all the time. Like he was like trying to court her. You are too short for me. And it took 
Tony almost getting like beat up or harassed by a guy for her to actually start noticing Todd as like a dude that she can actually date. Like that was like the extremes Bro, that Todd Kev, had to Kev, go what did, Kev, what did I tell you? Remember what I told you like two weeks ago because a light clicked in my head about this? And I was just like, yo, certain, we were just talking about someone. I was like, he's just not masculine enough. He's up, right. he's of the height. But the thing is, that moment you're talking about is when um, Tony looked at him as masculine enough to date her. I, I think it's like, yeah. I, don't know, I don't know if it's like a mental trigger, but it's just like, women even talk about that when they're with, I've heard it before. Like, I don't date Sherman because I don't feel safe with them. Like, this guy's the same height. Like, it's like, yeah, as, I can definitely, I definitely certain things like that. that. Yeah, I feel like I definitely, um, there's like things, there's certain, I, I don't, I don't want people to drag me, so I'm not going to word it like that, but I feel like there's like certain things that's like biologically still wired in us, like whether we want to admit yeah. it or not, like seeing that a man can like provide and like protect, like those types of things, like reduce some type of, I mean, produce some type of like, <laughs> I don't know, like, I mean, like oh, that nigga did, but like, I don't know, but like something like that, like the situation where like Tony and Todd was in, like if a, if a man did something to me that was like disrespectful or unwarranted and another man like stepped in and like checked him because unfortunately men only recognize like correction when it comes from other men unfortunately for whatever reason but like if i seen a man like do that and step in on my behalf i would kind of be like oh like it would but catch my attention i'll say this and we can move off this topic um if this never happened in girlfriends but if joan was trying to get at a guy and the dude was like you're too flat chested for me, or something along those lines. We will not hear the end of it that entire episode. Like, that'll just ruin Joe's entire day. She'll be pissed off the entire day. Todd had to go through that he is too short. He can't fix that. <laughs> like, he can't just grow up and be like, tall. Just, yeah, just imagine living that. Like, and this is, this is why, this is why I, I was saying, like, if he was black, I would, I would relate to him. Like, this is something that, like, I know as, like, growing up, like, yeah, it bothered you when you were, like, 16. And if you know mm -hmm. me, like, all my friends are, like, 6'5 plus. So it's like, yo, you know, you know, like, oh, th this is always how you're going to be seen. But, like, you deal but with does that. does it still bother you? It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me now. But, like, when I was younger, you hell yeah. You said what? Are you being honest with yourself? I'm being 100% honest. If, if, it, if, I, if I had, if is it, it, like, is if it, it like really like, bothered me, trust me, I'd be acting way different than I than I do act. But I feel like it's also, like, is it, is it a matter of like, like, I feel like most shorter guys I know, they overcompensate in other areas. So it's like, okay, this thing might be short, but X, Y, you know what I'm saying? Like, so oh, like, sure. do you, because, do you but those do like having those to overcompensate? 1000%. Like, I think there's like, like, I think it's, it's certain things like, oh, like, oh, maybe I have to be a little, like you have to do something to stand out when you're short. And I always give this advice. Yeah. And even if you're not short, like if you have a short mentality, there's dudes who are, who are tall and I'm like, yo, you act like a short nigga. But it's like, you have to overcompensate. And, so, and overcompensating, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just like, you have to use what God gave you to, if you're trying to attract the opposite sex, that's just what you got to do. It's the game. Women, women overcompensate all the time. Like, and actually it's worse for women than it is for shirt diggers. You be seeing women, you know, doing, you know, a bunch of cr like surgeries and shit just so they can uh, attract the uh, opposite sex. That, or, I mean, some women say they do it for themselves, so let me not judge them. But women do certain things too. So it's like, that's just part of the game. It's part of society. Now I'll say this, like you kind of brought up a good point. Um, you know, like Todd kind of like, he had to like do more in order to be, uh, in order to get Tony to be attracted to him. But William kind of has like a short dude mentality. So I don't know if you remember like in the beginning of the season. Um, Wait, you said who do who does? Sorry. Will, William. William, William oh, in the yeah, beginning William, of the season. William, yeah, William is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right. So like before like he found Monica or Monica found him, depending on where you look at it, like he was too scared to talk to women. He was terrified of doing that. You know, until like he stumbled across uh, Monica. Monica's like, finally, <laughs> like all these dudes were trying to talk to me, and it took you this long to finally reach out to me. So yeah, I mean, you made a good point there. Oh, I, I once again something I witnessed. But... It's not like you short or anything. Anyways, <laughs> um, uh, all right. So we brought up William. Let's talk about. Uh, so do I see what you have here? How do you get your your female friends? What do you do if your female friends don't like your lady? Did I did I get that one right? Yeah. All right. So I just set the scenario here. Uh, so basically, William's dating Monica. Monica's a gold digger. 
Um, Monica tells Willie to trade up. I don't love you. I don't like you. I'm only with you because I see potential in your career and I see like you can make a lot of money in the future. And William's like, screw it. I'm okay with that. You know, I'm lonely. I'm okay with that. Uh, the girlfriends don't like Monica. They think that he's, she's taking him away from them. Um, they confront Monica about it. Uh, Monica tells them, look, Joan, especially you, Joan, uh, as soon as William gets promoted, you're done. You're out of here. Um, which actually is a foreshadow when you think about it. Uh, so again, like, here's a question. So what do you do when your female friends do not like your, your girlfriend? I personally don't care. <laughs> I'm just keeping it on it. So we'll be like, oh, my friends don't like you. Fuck your friends. Do you want to fuck your friends, nigga? Like, just go fuck them. I, I think, like... That, I, that's I, a foreshadow. <laughs> I think, um, for me personally, like, it would be different if it was my sister's. But even if my my sisters just aren't those type of people that don't like people, so it'd be weird. But I know for me, like women, like this is a crazy set sentence, but like women have con came and gone in my life. Like I'll get other female friends if that's really what's going to be. Huh? What you say? <laughs> women have come and gone, friends. Actually, people. Period. Like I, I've noticed one that in my twenties, and like there's I, apart from my core friends who I've had my whole life, like. There's so, so many people. Just think about people who are in your life at 24, like 25, maybe for you, huh? Like 20. But that's a part of your 20s, though. Like, that's why. Yeah, and, and that's what I'm, and that's what I'm, and that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm cool with just being like, all right, this, you are good for this moment of my life, but mm -hmm. I'm moving on with Shorty. Wait, so let me hear this straight. Let me, let me hear this. So you said, so if you're, so what if I, okay, we not like, what if I, one of your really, really, really good friends didn't fuck with your significant other? Like, what y'all, what y'all doing? Like, like, I'm talking about like your day one, like, you know what I'm saying? So like, day I, this is actually an opposite end to this conversation. Cause one of my, one of my close day one friends, his girl, I know does not fuck with me for, for a good reason, because it's yeah. just there. And I told him, I told him, I was like, yo, if it ever comes down to it, like choose her, bro. Like I, I like I literally told this, him that, and it's because it's like at That's the end of the day, him. at the end of the day, bro. What we have, like, we've been rocking with each other for ten plus years, but that's always gonna be the like who you chose to be with. That's something you know. What I'm saying that's your legacy. That's something that, like, she might potentially have your kids one day. Like, you should always choose that because it's gonna be harder to find that person that you really connect with than you know. What I'm saying you have other boys. Like at the end of the day, so I always say choose choose the significant other. So I'll say this, like relating back to the show, um, the, the girlfriend that led this charge was Joan. And when Joan found out that William and Lynn were hooking up, she had a huge issue about that. She was like, I don't agree with it. I don't like it. Um, wait, wait, when, wait, what? When Lynn and William were hooking up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Doing the friends and benefits thing. Uh, Joan was very vocal about that. She didn't like it at all. She hated it. Uh, and Tony kind of called her out. Do you like William or something? And I think like Joan is kind of like foreshadowing her like, future feelings about William here again, because like, the girlfriends also to Maya, like Maya's like, look, uh, Joan, I'm your roommate. Like, so I'm gonna be your ride or die, but like, they don't really care about Monica too much. Like they don't like her, but not as to the certain extent that Joan didn't like Monica. Um, and still so, like Joan, like kind of led the charge to confront Monica and try to like, get her out of William's life. Once again, Joan's trying to like, you know, interfere with someone else's relationship. So I, I think, you know, Hannah, you, you talked, you touched on a good point there where you said like, you know, do you want to fuck your friends? And I'm like, low key, I think Joan actually did kind of want to fuck William, but she, she just didn't want to. She didn't want to fuck William. She like, does this, this want like, cause if William was not William that she met, like, you know how you, you called him short earlier, he had a short mentality. Mm -hmm. If it was William later, I guess he started becoming William now, you said with Monica, that's the one yes. she ended up liking, like, because. Oh, um, that's, so the, that was the moment, right? That was the moment. Because, Interesting. Like, like, if before that, it, she wouldn't have cared if it was old William, but. Yeah, that's a good point. Because, yeah, that's a really good point. Because she didn't really care when he was, when he was dating uh, the cop in the prior seasons. You know, Joan actually didn't care. She even, like, helped plan the wedding and everything. I think Monica kind of drove that, like, oh, oh, okay, I'm actually trying to the William now. And Joan, so okay, that's Monica actually really good. Also, a bitch. Like, are we just like? So is Tony. Yes. So but bitches is different when they're your friends. Like, <laughs> like it's different. Like, Monica's dead ass a bitch. Like, 
Yes, but so is Tony though. And Tony embraces that. Now I understand it. Like you you def like you can definitely not like somebody for like the same trait that your friend has just because that's your friend. I, I can all right. There was like one segment. Um, this is gonna take a wild split from what we're talking about. All right, so I went to talk about the corporate America episode, right? And the reason why is like it really highlighted like the two types of employees: the one employee that kind of like they do everything right, but they don't do anything like above and beyond, but they're expecting to get the promotion. And then like you have William who dropped twenty thousand dollars to get promoted, but did it. So let me ask you this what are you doing? Like, what is the greatest extent that you will do to get promoted or to make more money in your career? I feel like this is a bad question to ask. So I don't know where to be Gen Z's. Yeah. Wait. Because so I feel like for us, like our generation is just like, fuck you guys. Like, we'll do <laughs> our own shit. But like, like I've, like, I think like, uh, for example, I just told you guys about how um, yesterday there was a, a whole thing uh, at my job because no one on my side of the business got promoted. Mm -hmm. And they were saying, like, they have families and shit. And I was just like, everyone was like, Stephen, why aren't you mad about this? And I was like, I don't give a fuck. Like, <laughs> I, feel like I feel like they're paying me too much money. Like, <laughs> that's how I felt. But it's just like, I could understand, like, from their point of view, like, when you have families riding, you don't really have any other business aspirations. Like, this is going to be the determinant whether your kids are going to um like private school or public school or what neighborhood you're living in so yeah like i would do what william did or, or more if i was in that situation oh wow yeah because i was thinking my god so wait i'm not so the question is what would you do like how far would you go like to basically like get a raise or a promotion at your job yeah so like to I, kind of put it in I context here right? to quit. i would threaten to quit i literally did that like it's funny because this literally just happened to me like within the past 24 hours um I found out that like someone who's the same level as me was getting paid more than me and I'm like hold up like pause like can, can someone break this down to me and it literally took me like going going to my manager going to HR like being like this is wild so I'm about to like I literally took, I was like I'm, I will quit like what's happening well, so your team William in this scenario <laughs> Yeah, because I think especially, I mean, like, obviously now it's, like, way more political now. It sounds crazy to say, but I feel like now it's way more political to be Black. I mean, I feel like being Black has always been political, but I feel like it's way more, like, it holds more weight now because we have the attention of, like, white people. Like, I can't 100% relate because, like, William is a man, but, like, me as a Black woman, like, anybody wants to play with me like if I feel like there's more resources that, that someone can give me to do a job like I want them and I'm asking for them and I want there to be like transparency around the process of like you my employer giving me those resources to do said job oh, that's a good point um that's a really good point I thought like this episode episode 13 kind of aged the best out of like anything else because um what they were going through at work again like there was a glass ceiling where the senior partners are all white you know this is an all white males club and like i think that still kind of goes on in corporate america today where like if you're a black employee you do kind of hit like this invisible ceiling and you know you're doing everything right you're not making any mistakes like you're going above and beyond like for example like william when he spent twenty thousand dollars right william spent twenty thousand dollars to host a christmas party for, for his, you know, for his coworkers, people that he really didn't want to hang out with, he didn't want to be with, he didn't want to do this at all. Okay, but was that William or Monica? It doesn't matter. He spent it, right? It doesn't matter because William wanted but a promotion, I, I, though. It does matter, though, because it's like if Monica was not around, he would not have done that. But that's just, that's not just really this conversation. That's just him, his lack of ambition. Well, he has ambition, but he, I guess he does, he doesn't, though. Like, he wants to get promoted, and I, I think I, Monica's I, kind of pushing. Yeah, I, I call that lack of it's just like, oh, I want to be promoted, but if you're not doing anything to be promoted, you have lack of ambition. Monica gave him that ambition. Monica actually, now that you painted it for me, like he, he she built with me. Yeah, no, she did. Like she, she deserves all the credit for William being William, right? Well, not all of it, but all of it, eighty percent, eighty percent of it, a solid eighty percent of it. But yeah, like so, William spends twenty thousand dollars to host his Christmas party, and because like he didn't go to the after party, he misses out on the case. 
and he misses out on this case because his white coworker was there, spent no money. He was just there. <laughs> and he got that big time case that like he needed in order to put on his resume to get promoted. So like I kind of like thought I kind of thought them there like you I dropped. Thought, I, wrote, I wrote about that case too in the, the note like um, when Joan was hating about it. Yes, 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 yes. Um, we can also talk about Joan too. So like when they didn't get promoted, uh, you know William was pissed off. Joan was pissed off. They go to the bar to have a couple of drinks, and William has a pact with Joan saying, "Tomorrow at work, I'm quitting. Are you with me or not?" And Joan goes, no. But Joan wasn't heavily intoxicated, to Joan's credit. She says, uh, no. But when it came down to the moment where, uh, where William was quitting, um, Joan didn't really have his back at all. So I, I may ask you this. Who was more right or who was more wrong in that scenario? Uh, uh, could they both be right? <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> Well, explain why. Why do you think both were right? So, like, Joan is right because she, wait, yeah, Joan. Joan is right because they made, they made wait time out. William is right because Joan made a pack with him. So it's like, yo, you aren't riding with me. But then at the on the other side, I think it's right to look out for your career first. Like, I feel like that. That's just always. I feel like how you should handle, um, you know, business. So I'll say this. So like the second time I rewatched this um, before like the podcast, I, I agreed with you, right? I thought like, you know, they both were right. So William was taking a stand and Joan was like, look, I was really drunk. Like I kind of like my job. I'm not leaving. Like I'm happy where I'm at. The third time I rewatched this season though, I get it. And William was actually right. Not because like I'm a William groupie, but what William did was that he showed the senior partners, you guys disrespected me and I'm not afraid to leave. Like, I'm not afraid to leave and just leave you guys, like screw you guys, right? Wait, Tom, what, is your, I, I feel like you, you just changed questions. Are you saying like, what was the better business move? Oh yes, yeah, what was the better business move? Oh yeah, William. Like, okay. that's just what Hanna was just saying about how like, pull a William, just like say you're about to quit. Like, and he did quit. And I don't know if that happened in this season, but we saw the, the eventual outcome of it. Yeah, no, we saw the eventual outcome. And then, like, the person that got hired over William and Joan, uh, I think her name was Sharon, she calls out Joan. She was actually more mad at Joan than she was at William. And, like, you know, obviously, like, she probably did like William, yes. But she tells Joan to her face, like, you obviously weren't happy here. You obviously felt the type of way about not getting promoted. And, like, you didn't say anything. Was that in the season? Because there was also... That was in the season, yeah. Honestly, that's one thing about that that situation that needs to be noted. I've noticed this with women. And I don't... It, it, even it's just, like, um, I wouldn't, I want to say, like, mother-daughter relationships. Like, I've noticed, like, my mom and my sisters. Like, I feel like women are a lot harder on women than they are, like, with men. So it's like... Mm-hmm. let's say even let's say even Interesting. Jill, I feel like even if it was the other way around and Joan left like I don't think she has that conversation with William like she has with Joan. Interesting I didn't I didn't look at it that way. Yeah I, I think like I've always noticed that when like there's like a higher up woman um dealing with uh like in, in the black community like they always I feel like they're always harder on women than they are men. Mm-hmm. Black ones do that to their daughters versus their sons like they're just for sure. Like my mom is honestly, my mom is honestly lucky that like, like I've honestly been reflecting. Like I was used to be wild, man. Like my mom's lucky that I I've never gotten to really like, like that I'm I'm still breathing, I'm still alive. You know, like my sister, she never, like my sister, my mom tried to parent my sisters more than she parented me, but I was the one who needed the parenting. If that made it, sense. Well, that makes sense. I I didn't look at it that way at all, but like that that's a different way to look at it. Cause like I saw it more so like she was calling out Joan for not being ambitious enough. And so like, she kind of like was pushing Joan out of the office. Cause like, I don't want you here if you're not going to be ambitious. Okay. So that's the way I saw it. But and, like, that's, and that's what I'm saying. We agree with that, but I'm saying like women is just like, I feel like men kind of do it, but not to that certain extent. Like a man will like go to another man and try to motivate him and be like, you know, take him under his wing and you know, tough love type shit in corporate America more than he would try to do it with. 
I've even done that. So like, I know that for facts. So interesting. Um, I feel like that's what Sharon wanted to do with Joan because she had Joan host the uh, the the book club, and mm-hmm. she kind of gave her like the tough love type of thing. She because I rewatched like the book club episode again the third time, and I was like, why is Sharon being such a bitch to her? And I realized like Sharon was like trying to coach her. Like you knew this book club was happening and you didn't even read the book. Like you didn't even come prepared to this thing. Like you didn't even skim through it. You couldn't even BS properly. And like, she was just trying to coach her up and like John just wasn't really seeing it like yet. She eventually saw it, but she wasn't seeing it there. So maybe she was giving it a tough bluff. Yep. Honestly, uh, this book really touches on so many real things in life. Like, it does. All right. They, they did touch on one thing having a relationship with her coworker. So uh, in the prior seasons, Joan had a relationship with a subordinate. Uh, in this episode, in this season, William has a relationship with the superior. So would you guys ever do that? <laughs> you know I would, but I never knew you pulled that off. <laughs> That's a, would I? Yes. Have I? No. I don't think. No. Hot air being real Actually, Actually, I have, but not like my my um direct. If I was single, I would say it depends. <laughs> That's what I would say. I would say it depends. It depends how much I like this job and it depends what I think. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> how much I like this job. Right. How easy is it for me to like get another job after this? So that's what that's what I'm gonna say it depends. I think it's messy. It definitely happens, but I personally don't think it's ideal. Like someone that I'm dealing with, like work is something that you have to go, go like you gotta work like every almost every single day, like at least five days out of the week, right? So it's just like I don't wanna pull up to work and see like my piece. <laughs> I I agree gotta, with that. I agree I'd rather with that. not I engage that. in it. It's definitely happened before, but I just rather not engage in it. I had like, like so uh the two two companies I used to work at um I had coworkers that were married to someone that work at the same company, the same location, everything. And it's just it's so funny how they interact. It's like on my first job, like my coworker, she'll be telling me, like, I I hit up my husband all the time to the instant messenger. And like he don't be re- responding back to me. He doesn't even talk to me throughout the day until like <laughs> until it's like five o'clock. That's when he talks to me. And then it was like the same thing on my other job where like uh, the dude I was working with, he would do the same thing. Like they'll talk occasionally, but like he's not seeing her at all until five o'clock and at home they're not talking about work. So I, I don't know if I could do that. That's a lot to see like a one person throughout the entire day. <laughs> um, and of course, Joan kind of ruins that relationship for William and, uh, and Sharon. Yeah. It's like she always does. Yeah, yeah. yeah Joan is just like... He's the worst type of woman. Yeah, like, girl, shut up. Like, just stop talking. <laughs> so, all right. I know I said last time Lynn was the best person for, for William. I think Sharon was the best person for William. She had a job. She was super ambitious. And, and like they both literally like each other. Like they actually like the same thing. So I thought like those two are like a perfect for each other. I think William just was too scared to pull the trigger on it or something like that. Uh, she was too boring for him. You think so? Yeah, that's not the one you cuff and you turn into a monster. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not team William man. Little Miss Sharon. All right, maybe I'm just team. I remember this anti Monica. I like Monica. I'm, I'm kind of curious. What I'm saying. I like what Monica became. But. I actually don't. I really don't. I like this Monica more than I do the later season of Monica. Nah, like, you drag, her, drag her through the mud. No, no, no. Because, and I apologize to our listeners, she loses her edge in the later seasons. Like, she becomes vulnerable in the later seasons. And I like, no, I like this Monica now. I like this Monica that's like it's telling cause, William. It's because you, you want you want a woman to to do to do that for you. I don't know about that. Are you are you foreshadowing? You want someone to drag you through the mud? <laughs> is this is not a, this is not about me here, sir. All right, I'm just uh, saying. Do not, do not is, that, me, sir. is that what you're saying? Because that's what it sounds like. No, I'm not that's saying that's what I mean. want. I would I would be out of there. Man. Love oh, Monica like, told William straight up. So you quit your job? I'm out. I only dated you for your job. I'm like, you know, 
I mean, I don't want to foreshadow too much, but that helped William out big time in the future. So. <laughs> All right, uh, let's talk about, uh, so do I see here you have, um, how do you handle your friends um, when a relationship goes wrong? I'm sorry, how do you handle your, how do you handle your friends if they have kids when their relationship goes wrong? And huh? how do you handle, how do you deal or cope with I don't even friends? know what I was saying here, bro. I don't know. I'm trying to like, correct it right on the fly here. <laughs> My new friend and her divorce. Um, oh, I was thought you were talking about um, that was a messy scenario, but also, um, you know, just like Jabari, just like dealing the whole divorce situation. Like, how did he go through that and cope through that scenario? Yeah, someone who grew up in that. Jabari. It's someone who grew up in that. I think. Um, I think Jabari. Actually, we never really talk about him, but like he definitely was a good character for kids who like grow up in like single parent homes and then like end up being like your mom's I don't want to say boyfriend but like your mom's boyfriend where it's like she, she, Maya would like you think Tony was ever get, I mean Maya was ever given that I feel like Maya a lot of times would like confide like secretly say shit to Jabari and I'd be like yo this nigga is nine years old and then I would yes that. like my mom yes. would say shit to me when I was nine and like looking back at it what? I forgot. I can't really point to it, but it's just like their relationship just reminded like, and I think that played into why like Jabari wanted his parents to get back together because I think in the in the grand scheme of things, Jabari always knew that's what made would make his mom happier. And I think it's just that dyna- that whole dynamic is just like I'm telling you, just I, I felt it. But I can't really point to a, a specific conversation. I again like I don't want to be too critical of Maya because. Maya did have Jabari at 16, and Maya is, I think, 25 in this season. So she's really young. Um, but I do agree with you that she did confide to Jabari, or as Tony will call him, Jabubu, or whatever word that because of a J. Jabari. <laughs> yes, I thought, I thought that was the funniest thing, when, like, Tony would just be like, you know, who are you talking about? You talking about Joanna Man or whatever? Like, she was just like, whatever J word comes to mind. And I'm like, curious if like, like the actress actually had it in her script or did she just like came up with that on the fly? Because <laughs> she was just killing it. She had to freestyle it. Yeah, she had to freestyle it. Be- I wonder, if we could get, if we were big enough to have like one of them on the show, like, I would definitely ask him like, so how much freestyling did you guys do throughout the show? Because there's some episodes where I'm like, you guys freestyled a lot. Um, what was I talking about? No, like, I, I, I yeah, I, I agree with you. I think she did confide to Jabari a lot. I think that, uh, you know, she gave the kid too much information, to be honest. Like, the kid didn't really need all that information. She was like, I'm moving home. You don't have to tell him that. Just show up, you know? So, like, I, I agree with you on that one. But you wanted to talk about um, Maya's friend. So the person that Maya befriended at work and her relationship with her baby daddy. So what did you want to talk about there? I forgot. Honestly, I, I really don't remember what friend we're talking about. <laughs> How about right. she's keeping the kids away from the daddy? Yes, she's keeping the kids away from the daddy. That was the whole thing. You don't remember that episode. So basically, like, uh, she was... a really ghetto friend? Well, first off, first off, this is a complete side conversation. So, like, she was ghetto, yes, but it showed, like, how, like, detached Joan was. Because Joan, like, flipped out when she brought the illegal box to the house. And she was like, oh, my God, this is a, this is a criminal. Get this criminal out of my house. And I just like, what? Joan, I hate. Joan is like, Joan, if, if, if girlfriends came on present day, Joan would 202% be a blavity black. Like, Joan is one of them uppity, like, Jack and Jill, like, just that whole interaction. Like, now we're girl, dating on Jack and Jill women. Oh, like, who, who the fuck is coming to, to, to check you in this fucking cable box? Like, chill the fuck out. Like, why are you, like... I oh, really now I remember this. Uh, like, shit. I really don't like black people like that who try to, like, treat other black people as if they're less than. Like, girl, as far as the white man is concerned, if he come and look at us, like, we're all niggas. Like, we're all, like, yeah. Like, and it was right. also, like, Able box. So I'm like, bitch, what is your issue? Like, why are you trying to totally demonize this lady? Uh, I you think. Know, go ahead. Now I remember the conversation, by the way. All right. You know, I'm talking about that part where um, 
the dad was trying to see their kid and they were by the car. Yeah, so and, super sad to see. And, and like, Shorty started wilding. Um, and yes. I, Maya was scared to like intervene in that. And that was my question. Like, if that ever happens, when do, when do you like intervene between a friend and her like relationship slash kid? When you uh, know- so that's, that's tough because, you know, Maya just met her. And like, you know, again, she didn't really know her. She only saw like, the good side of it. And she saw like the dark side. And that was the first time her seeing that. And she again, she doesn't really know her. I think that if it was like, let's say hypothetically, Tony has a kid and she's like, you know, keeping Todd or whatever the baby dad is with the kid. I think I would want Maya to step in that scenario and be like, yo, what are you doing? Like that kid needs to be in that parent's lifestyle. That kid needs to be, you know, in the life of that parent. But I think Maya kind of handled that situation like right there. I mean, it was kind of messed up, extremely messed up what Maya's friends was doing. You know, just like he cheated on you. That's between you two. Do not bring your kids involved in that at all. That's terrible. Like you don't want your kids growing up to hate your dad because of something like he did to you, not to them. So, so I think Maya kind of handled that scenario well. It was just a really shitty scenario to be in, though. Yeah, facts. Um. Okay, let's talk about this. So you had here on your list. Um, do people really get selfish when their friends hit relationship milestones? Uh, so. <laughs> you wrapped the shit down. <laughs> well, these are like reactions when I was watching, but <laughs> like now I'm thinking it's like, fuck no, like why do I care? Um, All right, uh, let me set the scene for you then. Uh, so basically what happens is that uh, Tony gets engaged with Todd and uh, you know, Ty and Tony are fast pacing, really fast pacing this wedding together. And, you know, Tony wants like a huge dream wedding. They're having a wedding at like some like fancy resort in California. Uh, it's just a fairy tale wedding scenario, basically. And this is exactly the type of wedding that Joan always wanted, but she never got. And so like, she's looking at Ellis because in reality, she's been dating Alice longer than like, you know, Todd and Tony have been dating. You know what I mean? And like, Alice hasn't popped the question. Alice hasn't even hinted towards popping the question, right? And so like, she like gets jealous of that and she really takes her anger out on, on, on Alice and really kind of pushes him out the relationship because of that. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that's like, you know, kind of like sets the scenario out for your question there. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what happened. Um, from a man's perspective, like, I don't know, like, I've never really, like, I've never really cared when my friends got into, like, some, ser- I think maybe it's because my friend, like, none of my close, apart from, yeah, shout outs to Glove, Glove just got married, but, like, none of my friends, close friends have really hit that milestone, you know, where, you know, like my friends who have gotten married so far, they haven't even hit their those part that part in their their relationship where it's like you know they have multiple kids and you know the house in the suburbs, you know that dream life that like you know kids where I'm from you know dream about. But maybe when that moment happens, if I'm still where I'm at right now, I'd be like, damn, like I might start hating. But like where yeah. I'm at, now, where, where I'm at now, it's like yeah, you got the wedding, that's cool. Like I, that's never been a like a, a dream for me, like. I don't have a dream wedding merit like like pictures like for me so it's like whatever whoever I end up with is you know wait what was the African question person. um uh, hating on your friends hitting relationship milestones no no I don't think I ever like something like I don't think I'll ever be that person just because so if your best friend gets married before you do you're like oh, whatever I'm I'm gonna just I'm gonna be happy for her because that's my best friend. I feel like me as a person, one thing I've came to know, like come to realize and learn, and I feel like I still have learning to do because I'm still relatively young, but like when it comes to relationships and things like that, like what's for you is for you and who's for you is, is you know, who is for you. So like that type of like having an envious spirit about things like that is like, it kind of serves no purpose. I don't know. I never, 
I don't know. I feel like maybe I still. I feel like because I am still so young, I don't care about it that much. Because it's like, oh, I have time. I feel like maybe when I get older, like maybe I'll start to be like, oh, okay, like everybody around me is doing this or doing that. But I feel like comparison is a thief of joy. Like I'm on my own little time line of how things are supposed to go. So I'll be happy for my friend. Like that's your friend. You can share the joy with them. It's not necessarily the same, but like you can share the joy with them. Like that's your best bitch. Don't don't share it. Like like, hopefully you you, you'll meet a nigga at the wedding. Like it's up. Like I don't Joan Joan was too busy on sharing on people's happiness. My happiness. Joan got disinvited from the wedding too. Like this is her second wedding in a row. And she got so the, the common theme is like don't invite Joan to your wedding and don't have her manage anything even for a wedding. <laughs> but I also feel like this speaks to the type of person, like the type of girlfriend like Joan was. Like she was a she's a box checker, like she's a habitual box checker. And I feel like when you operate from a place like that, like you'll never really experience happiness for yourself or other people because you're not really doing it like you know, like from a genuine place. Like you're doing it because you want to do it because this is just what you think you should be doing so yes yes and i i think that's like a big part of joan's character y'all don't ever y'all don't ever feel that though feel what like feel what like you should like this doesn't have to do a relationship where you're just like yo like I, i have to like i'm at this age i should be you know here in my career or i should be doing this or i shouldn't be doing that like career yes you shouldn't even really I'm not gonna lie I feel like I like up until I was like 21 I was definitely a box checker like everybody that knows me like I'm extremely type a like I get like I'm very like work oriented like goal oriented I get shit done I was completely like 100% married to like oh I should be doing this by that age and that age but it's like I feel like if you operate with that mindset all the time like you setting yourself up for like I don't want to say failure but that I just don't think that's a good like mindset to operate from. Like, oh my god, I'm like I'm 24. Like, so because I'm 24, I should have X, Y, Z. And it's like you're not taking into account like everything else that's gotten you to this point, or everything else that you haven't experienced yet. So I feel like it's good to keep like goals in mind and always have like a one year plan, a three year plan, a five year plan. But like saying oh, like age is so arbitrary. So is time. Like. So I'm not gonna lie. I actually got my last job because, um, you know, my she wasn't my manager then. She was interviewing, but you know, she was like, "Well, what's like your five year plan?" And like, I told her straight up, like, I don't have a five year plan. And like, the reason why is because like, you don't even know what's gonna happen to you a year from now. Um, and so it took me like, you know, like probably was it how old was I? Twenty seven. Took me up to twenty seven to kind of realize like, dude, you don't know what's gonna happen in year twenty eight. You don't know what's gonna happen in year twenty nine. Like, you really don't. Like, you don't know what to expect. So like, why? It's okay to like have goals set, but like to have like a checklist, kind of like what Sean did. Is I think like that's kind of disastrous for like your your mental health, basically. You know, I think the life just doesn't operate that way. It doesn't operate as an organized thing like that. Uh, shit happens i know for me personally like i feel that now more than ever um and i don't think it's like a career thing i just know like i always tell people like 18 year old me will be very disappointed about where i am right now so like i i always feel that and and it's not even like a career thing like i just felt like you know by like you know it's just that's just being naive about being 18 but like i felt like oh by the time i'm like 25 like i would have bought my mom two houses by now like i'd be driving this car i'd be doing that and it's just like you know i'd be an entrepreneur like i'd be a millionaire like there's just so many goals you had when you left that crib at 18 that like now i'm like i'm happy with where i am because i feel like i've done well but it's just like damn like those dream milestones which is why i'm happy i don't really live live that way but you know yeah i definitely f- think about it like damn i'm not where i thought i would be and i'll say this like you know i think for me like when i was 18 i definitely did have like those career milestones like all right you need to graduate college before you're 21 check like you need to like have a job like at 22 check like you need to like hit like these career milestones you need to get promoted at, like 24 so i think like you know, like, you know, when I got passed over for my promotion, like, I, I kind of felt like how Joan's feeling about, um, like, the wedding type of thing. Like, 
shit, like that was my that's that was my wedding, that was my thing. So like when I got past off my first promotion, I was like, oh, shit, that was my promotion. Like what happened there? So, you know, I don't know. Like career wise, I do kind of understand where Jones coming from, but like later in life, I think Jones like what thirty at this point. You should know better. <laughs> you know, like you should definitely know better. For sure. All right. Uh, let's move on to my favorite section, the yikes moment of the season. So, um, guys, what was your yikes moment of the season? Uh, what? I, I, can, I can go first if you guys want. You go first. You go first. Yeah, you go first. You go first. I have a couple. All right. Uh, all right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. All right. We didn't talk about this a little bit, so I'm going to bring it up. Uh, so my first yikes moment of the season was Tony tries <laughs> Tony tries to build up good karma in order to get a negative HIV test result. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh wait. So, so Tony never got tested before. I, I don't blame Tony, to be honest. Like, you know, getting tested is very scary. And this season actually did kind of touch upon, uh, you know, HIV and AIDS in the black community. Um, you know, uh, Lynn, she figures out the purpose of her documentary. We didn't really talk about Lynn that much, which says a lot about Lynn. But we didn't talk about Lynn that much, but, like, um, she, she meets her mom. Her mom's kind of a And she gives her an inspiration to pursue a, a documentary. And her boyfriend, what's, her, what's his name, Shavad, gives her an inspiration to do a documentary on HIV AIDS. And we discovered that, uh, I guess maybe the fifth girlfriend from college that kind of fell off, that one girlfriend that like you know, everyone was cool with, but she kind of fell off in the future and later on in life. She has HIV AIDS. And so like, this kind of like sums it up all here. So like, Tony wants to like get an HIV test and she is scared as hell. <laughs> <laughs> and so she's just like telling all her friends like how much she loves them, how pretty they are, and everything, just to get a, a negative test result. I thought that was like my ex moment, but it was also pretty hilarious, yeah. Uh, so what was your what was your guys' like ex mode this season? I feel like, oh, you can go. I was gonna say, I was gonna ask you, what's the wedding in this season or next season? This the what the season ends with the wedding. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you remember, like, they actually have like, a pretty cool scene where I think they free solid it too, right? All four girlfriends, after Tony says, I do, like, they're just dancing down the aisle. I feel like they free solid that part, but, like, that's kind of how the season wraps up. So, yeah, for me, it's um definitely the the um, Joan-Tony situation. Where Tony, like, cuts up the dress and shit. Like, that was just, like... Uh, I forgot about that. I forgot that about whole that. that whole scenario. Like I couldn't imagine where your friend showing up to your your wedding shit late. Like Joan just was hating, and she just didn't really like. She wasn't she wasn't there for Tony's moment. And I, I know like I'm just saying like even as a man like if your best man's not there for that like you guys let's say you're on your bachelor weekend and your home your your best friend didn't pull up like you'd be like damn bro like I, I would be tight too. I, so like I'll say this like. You know, I get it. It's a TV show, um, but that portion was a little bit unrealistic. Like they, they kind of rebounded after that, like pretty quickly. And like, even from a guy's point of view, like if my best man, like on my wedding day, showed up late and was pulling this BS, like this is done. <laughs> like I can't mess with you anymore. <laughs> like you know, I, I see like where you stand in this scenario. Like we're we're just, just done at this point. Like. Uh, Tony, we're going to this season. She's thirty-two, you know, and and uh, uh, you know, Jonas. I think she's thirty-one. So it's just like you're too old to be acting like this. Like we're done after this. You know, it's funny that you, you said too old, um, like multiple times. Now that I'm, <laughs> now that the, I'm the age I am, I understand why like, people who be like thirty-three and they still be wild. But we we'll talk about that later. No, nah, I not. Nah, I'm not saying too old. It's just like, you know. You just have to be like mature enough to like you know suck up your pride for specific moments in life, but you can still be wild and I get it. But like, you know, if it's your best friend's wedding, like just put your pride aside just for a little bit and just like suck it up until it's over. You know, just at least do that. Yeah, I thought my yikes moment was when 
Tony, I mean, Maya pulled up to Darnell's job basically because Tony told her, I mean, sorry, y'all. My customers have caught up to me. But Joan told her that, like, she saw Darnell, like, having lunch with his coworker. And Maya pulls up to the job and is, like, confronting this woman. And for me, like, it made me cringe because I just have, like, this strong, like, belief system that, like, if I suspect my partner of doing anything or, like, stepping out with somebody else, I am never going to confront that other person. Like, I feel like whether people want to admit it or not, like, maybe this is how the wheels turn in my, my head, but, like, you're giving that person power. Like, that, that person now knows that, like, they have influence in your relationship. They have some power. Like, like you checking for them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, one, it should have, like, why are you pulling up to his job? Like, that's embarrassing. You should have just... Yes. Waited till you, you know, like waited till you got home or approached him. Um, right, right. I agree. I feel like there's like, other ways to like handle it literally that. Literally made me cringe because I'm like, Maya, what are you doing? Like you're embarrassing yourself. Um, and that girl was also just like crunchy. Like it just it, it was it made me cringe. Like I was literally like cringing watching it. But that was my biggest like moment. I mean, I kind of agree with like y'all too, but just like on a personal level, like. If I think somebody's dealing with my man, I'm going to step to my man. So I try to give Maya some bail because, like, again, this season we kind of learned a lot more about Maya. I think this is Maya's first relationship. Again, she got pregnant at 16. And I don't know if they really said that Maya had, like, a boyfriend prior to Darnell or if, like, she even lost her virginity to Darnell. So I'm assuming she lost her virginia to Darnell, and like she's just super attached to him because of that, you know. So I, I and she's 25 years old, so like I don't know. Um, just touching on what um Anna said, like I'm definitely not approaching no, like neither of y'all, honestly. Like I'll probably just do it. unless we have kids. If we had kids, it'd be different. But if if it was if I if I had solid facts, like she would never hear from me again. Uh, so I actually have like two more yikes moments. So they're like kind of like not that good, but I'll, I'll just tell my life. So like one was uh, Maya didn't feel safe leaving nine-year-old Jabari home alone by himself. And the reason why I said that's my yikes moment was because like my parents, I'm the only child. They're like, you're nine, you're old enough, take care of yourself. We're out. See ya. <laughs> so <laughs> I think again, that touches on what I was talking about earlier. Um, so like my mom, well, my mom, of course, she's a single parent. Like she had to do it with me, but like she, it took her a while to get used to that. And that's because I feel like Maya was a lot more, like, for example, if Maya had another kid, like what, for example, my sisters, my mom was so easy just to leave them by themselves. She didn't, she never really cared, but that's because that's she was more attached to me. I was her first kid. I was a boy. And like, you know, that whole mother son relationship, I understood with Maya with the nine-year-old interesting yeah and she, once again she was 25 she, again yeah she was 25 right so that makes a whole lot of difference there uh, my second potential x moment was uh so when joan goes for a promotion interview she wears a see-through blouse at work in order to increase her odds of getting promoted during an interview that, that was my yikes moment i don't know that she was, was, just, she, was she was she was playing the game smart even though she had, nothing, she had nothing that people wanted to see through. She literally said, I think in that episode, like, let me step into the kitchen <laughs> real quick because it's colder before I start heading up and talk to him. Like, that show was hilarious. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. All right. So I think, like, um, that's all I got in season three. Again, like, I thought season three was a very pivotal yeah, Season moment. three. Season three was dope. Yeah. Season three was dope. Very pivotal moment. Is it our last? Is it our last segment though? Like, who's the favorite girlfriend? Is that? That's oh yes, I'm that's sorry. The- yes, who who that's was the girlfriend of the season? And we put a William Bian on this. We can't say William. Um, I'm gonna say Tony. Shit, um, that's mine. Tony, simply for two reasons: because she dated a short guy and she hated it. I loved. I just love seeing her pain, because I just love seeing the pain in women's face when it happens with me. Um, that one, and then two. I felt like, you know, she handled the thing with um <clears throat> with Joan good, even though she was hating. 
And the whole HIV yeah. thing was um, like she got her calm up, so she was doing well. <laughs> True. She was well. <laughs> what? All right, uh, Hannah, who was the girlfriend of the season for real? Oh, I have to get my girl, Tony. She ended the season yeah. with a ring. Uh, of course, you know, she ain't keep the ring. <laughs> but so it's going to be my girl, Tony. All right. I I'm gonna be different. I can't. We can't do a. You already said Tony. Though. You already said Tony. No, 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 no. no, no. I want to hear your reason. No, 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 no. no. I am. I. As much as I love Tony, I'm, I'm sure I'll say Tony again. This is the first old. time. This is the first time we're even giving this to Tony. No, I'm not giving it to Tony yet because he both said Tony. I'm actually gonna give the ring to Lynn. Uh, she ain't do season. nothing in this season. Why? Hear me out. Hear me out. Fuck All right, William. Not out season two, sorry. Um, no, so Lynn hates corporate America. She hates the cubicle, and she doesn't want to be there. But she really hates it. And I think, like, out of everyone in the show, she's the first person that's not afraid to quit, like, that nine-to-five job in order to pursue something like her own thing. So, like, in this season, like, she meets her mom for the first time. But, like, she's not afraid to, like, give everything up to pursue a dream. Like, she finally has a dream, and she's not afraid to give everything up for it. So, I, I'm going to give it to Lynn this season. I mean, that was that was a, a bad reason. That's all I'm going to say. Because that how was it a bad reason? Because the only reason she was doing that, if she, the only reason she was doing that, is because she didn't, have, she had friends to lean on. If she didn't have those friends to lean on, she would be like the rest of us at work, strapping our boots or whatever the saying is, and you know, digging in. That's the only. Uh, reason. And she's a bomb. Tony was the the real girlfriend of the season, and we need to give her the reward. Okay, the Lippers podcast. The Libras podcast in me has to do a rebuttal, and I'm going to say this. Uh, back in the Obama days, Obama told business owners, you didn't do that by yourself. And the business owners got like, really pissed off. I think that scenario applies here today. Like, look, like every successful business owner has to rely on someone. I mean, Amazon, they relied on, he relied on his parents. Oh, so. who, did, who did Tony rely on? Self-made, bro. She left Fresno. She left the streets. She strapped up. She worked. She got the ring from a white short guy. She worked. No, she did no, it. No, no. Tony is Tony is obviously the girlfriend of the entire series. I think we all agree on that. I, I don't know. I don't know about that. But we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. Season eight. We'll talk about that. All right. All right. So anyway, let's wrap this up. Um, so again, like I thought, season three was a very pivotal moment. We get to learn who the girlfriends really are. Like what drives them, what motivates them, uh, and the girlfriends, including William, as well. Uh, they did a really good job touching upon series of topics such as like hitting relationship milestones, uh, corporate goals, dealing with kids during their messy breakup. Um, you know, are men or women more superficial than one another? So I thought season three, personally, I thought this was the best episode, best season. Um, you know, but that's all I got, guys. Uh, it's been great. Uh, let's wrap it up. Please stay tuned for our recap of season four.